What's going on, YouTube? Nobody's in here yet. This is Wade with Wade's Ventures here. And this is Friday Night Live. Really spontaneous show, guys. Uh, give me one second. So let me get my other screen up here. Okay, one moment. Ah, there we go. There we go. What's going on, Paul? How are you, buddy? It's a really spontaneous, spontaneous live show here. Let me get this chat going, though, so I can at least see what you guys are talking. Oh, here we go. Cool. Moonlight. Dude, you want to go live with me, man? I. Uh, what's going on, Jess? Mr. Pac-Man, how are you? and let's see there we go hello from oregon hello hello what uh what part of oregon i think i've talked to you before was it um hmm, beaverton not too sure guys um i want to get somebody on here real quick so who wants to join me on the live stream let me let me know give me um, whoever wants to join me on the live stream, let me know. I just need your email address and I'll shoot you a link. Portland. Nice. Nice. I'm here in Beaverton, Oregon guys. It's uh, man, it's cold. I bought a storage unit and like I didn't go today, but I need to unload it tomorrow and I'm really not looking forward to that cause it's gonna be freezing, but, uh, really exciting stuff. Welcome in guys. Corvallis. Uh Oh, we got a beaver in the house. I don't know. I went to Eugene, but I'm not. I'm I'm all of all I'm all for any any uh, Oregon team to crush it. So, Mr. Moonlight, you want to go live? Let me know, Mr. Pac-Man. Let me know, guys. I kind of wanted to do an interview today, but unfortunately, nobody wanted to join. What up, Source? What's going on, buddy? Welcome in. What is going on? So, what? How's everybody's Friday night doing? You guys crushing it? I um. Long story short, I um, put in four more shelving units. So now I've got a ton here that I'm going to start listing. I've got about a uh, thousand items I need to get up. Um, I did watch 10K on the Bay's video today, guys, where he was cross posting between Posh and, um, and uh, eBay. And I am super excited because I'm going to be doing that tonight. I'm going to try to cross post about 200 items. So. Um, I am quickly learning, though, that posh is more for um, the ladies than it is the men. But I've got a lot of those clothes. So, Farm girl, you were born in Corvallis? I didn't know that. That's interesting. So anybody wants to go live with me for about a half an hour, let me know. Just send me a message with your email address. Um, I can even do more than one person. So if you guys want me to send you a link and you want to come join me, let me know. Dude, Pac-Man, I completely understand. It was I was swamped today, so I'm like I need a I need a breather here. Nice. I I the one thing I've I've noticed about Posh is the listing process is so much faster. Like and the funny thing is is I'm sure there's a lot of people in here that they're like, ah, I'll do posh later. I'll, you know, but like literally it takes two seconds to cross post. And I didn't realize that for a while. So for the last year, I've been like, I'm only eBay. I'm only eBay and Amazon. But then I downloaded posh and it like takes an extra two seconds to download on posh, you know, cross post. And um, it was just, it was pretty incredible. I, I haven't sold many items on posh yet, but um, it, it's super, super quick. Super, super quick. But uh, farm girls, you want to come live with me for a little bit? I know this was uh, un, um, un unannounced, but uh, source, what are you doing, buddy? It's got to be somebody that wants to hang out with me on a on a Friday night. Um, so I do have some cool, exciting news for you guys. Um, Sunday, I've got a special guest, a really special guest. It's going to be awesome. And, uh, and then we're Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we are doing our 
live Instagram or excuse me, live um, uh, interviews here on my channel with amazing people that are not Insta or YouTube famous. So source, you'll come on. Nice. Okay. Let me send you the link, buddy. We have an amazing resource source coming on. Give me one second. Let me go ahead and uh, send him a link. One second, guys. Control. Let me copy this link here. All right, buddy. I just need your email address. So I don't know if you want to put it in chat or if you want to message me on Instagram. Okay, I just got it. Let me go ahead and get you the link. I'm going to email it to you right now. Let's see. One second, guys. Let me just get this email going here. <laughs> I was like been working for the last five hours, so I'm like, screw it. I'm gonna go on YouTube and say hello to my amazing friends and family. All right, so I just sent you the link. Let me know when you get it. And then you should be good to go to join. Farm Girl, you want to come on? Let me um, send you a link. Well, let me know when you're when you got when you're back for 10 minutes. And, uh, and then I'll send you a link. All right, cool. Source, you got the link. So we're going to have a few resellers on here. That's going to be awesome. Stephanie, you want to come on? Give me one second, guys. Let me shut this door and get a beer real quick while I wait for source. So two seconds, okay? Oh, okay, guys. So I just got a text message. Let me show you. I don't know if you guys can see that. So yeah, you probably can't. But anyways, uh, there's this thing called imperfected food, or what's it? Um, imperfect foods, and basically it's this cool thing out of. Um, I think they're out of where are they out of San Francisco, I think, or something like that. Anyways, um, it's basically where the retail. Um, stores, the big box stores that sell you groceries. And um, they basically won't put, you know, twisted carrots or random stuff in their, um, there we go. In their grocery store, right? So um, they have this program, I think it's $17 or something. And, uh, and you can get like, you know, um, fruits and vegetables shipped to your door. Source, what's going on, buddy? What's up, dude? Join. Can you hear me okay? Hold on, you're muted. Let me see. Did I mute you or are you muted? Um, you're gonna have to forgive me. I'm somewhat new to this live chat. Let me see. Let me just make sure I didn't mute you. Mm hmm. No, you look good on my check. end. Wait. Check, check. Let me turn you up. Test, test. Testing. Oh. Testing. Oh, you look pretty good, Frank. That's odd. Hmm. Oh, you can hear him? Oh, wait. Crap. Let me see if it's me then. Okay. Oh, now I can hear you. You're uh, like. Hold on. I'm going to put in my microphone. Cause okay. Cool. See if it works. Looks like it was me then. That's odd. Cool. I can hear you, you can now. Can you hear me now still? I, oh, you've got a beautiful voice. I can hear you perfect. Good, good. So how how's your Friday night, man? I caught you at a caught you at a good time. Yeah, I'm just hanging out. Uh, wife went to work, hanging out with my son, and uh, 
sorting some Pokemon yeah. cards. Oh, here he is. Oh, breed him, breed him in. This one. This is new. All right, all right. <laughs> all right. What are you? Oh, what's going on, buddy? How are you? Say hi. What are you? What are am you? I? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I am I am Wade with Wade's hey, Venture. Wade. Say hi, Wade. Mm -hmm. Hi, Wade. Do you do you like Pokemon? Yeah. You, you do. I like Power Rangers. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Are you uh? The blue one. Which part? Oh, the blue one. Yeah, That's and the so red fun. one. And well, you can only like one. You like two. Yeah. Nice. I like what? a robot. What's their name, by the way? I forgot. It's been a while. What's the names? Do you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he knows them. <laughs> yeah. Are you gonna go play? I have. I have. Uh, I have two of those soon. I look forward to that. So I'll find yeah. other names very soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how's uh? How do you uh? I'm I'm kind of curious, man. You are busy, busy, busy. You've obviously got. I'm a family too. So how do you, uh, what's your day like? Um, wait, oh, hold on one second. Let me just. It's a Corona guys. Right. Um, so like, do you wake up early? Are yeah, you early right like now? six, get, you know, do my own thing. And then around seven, I start kind of working. Huh? Um, but I, I have a lot of stuff cause I sell Pokemon cards. So all that stuff's in my house. So I deal with that. That's like a half hour, hour in the morning, customer service, emails, try to get to the warehouse around 830, set everything up. And so, you know, that's I try and do that every day. And then, you know, in the morning, uh, you know, working out and all sorts of stuff. So try huh. to get it all done in like two hours in the morning. So, yeah. How, how, how far is the warehouse from you? From uh, down the block, like two miles down the road. So it's good. It's nice. That is convenience. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I um. I, uh, so I, I, I don't know if you know, but I had this half of my garage I was using, right? And then I took the, um, trailer out of it and now I've got the full garage. So now I can do about 7,000 items in here, which is really amazing. Um, but it's kind of like my own little warehouse. I love just getting up in the morning you're in your like sweats at like five thirty, six o'clock in the morning and bust out some work. So it's yeah, convenient, right. but two blocks away, that's not bad. That's really well, we good. Used, I used to work out of my house. I had a two car garage and then we used like most of my basement and it was just getting really cramped, really tight. Cause we don't do just clothing. We do like all sorts of other stuff. And it was just getting, you know, we had two, three, four people in two car garage with, with, you know, a couple thousand items. It was getting really cramped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> screaming at me. Yeah. But, um, I'm That's, like I used to just working and keep talking and he's uh -huh. in the background. Oh. Is it, do you, do you bring the little guy over to the warehouse sometimes? What's up? Do you, you bring the little guy over to the warehouse? Uh, once in a while. You know, he has his little toy box over there. I'm just uh -huh. putting batteries in my ship. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. He's putting uh, the batteries in his ship. Oh, nice. Nice. I, I, I have uh, I'm, uh, I put Kate all over my Instagram, so you probably know. But he's a month and going on five, or sorry, one year, five months now. And uh, he's we got our, yes. Oh, my gosh. He is. Uh, he's smart. He is really smart now. And, and um, he's like, you know, he, it's weird. Like he'll climb on things and he'll look at you knowing you don't want him to climb on it. Oh, <laughs> you know, he's that age. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, he's and he's obsessed with brooms. It's funny. Like he'll yeah. go in here and like grab a broom and start sweeping and then run into like a lot of different things. So that's so funny. But how are you doing those uh, Pokemon cards? I saw or excuse me, the um, you know, all the all the you had a big box of them right i mean oh, how do you, yeah. i have i have a few hundred thousand here that i just i don't know i'm gonna try and just do it all weekend but um because i'm way behind mm -hmm. but you know i'll buy a collection for like a hundred and part it out it's kind of like buying um you know a big lot of like video games you mm -hmm. know for 200 bucks and then selling all of them individually for three dollars and at the mm -hmm. end of the day you make a few hundred dollars profit but you got to put in the work. Mm -hmm. So I do that with Pokemon cards. And, you know, I've like a couple weeks ago, I sold a Pokemon card for like $2,000. There's a lot of very, very expensive cards. And a lot of them start at 99 cent auctions. And there's just a desire for them. And so I don't have to, uh, I, cash flow is great. 
I, I, I bet you and uh, you and Chris get along really well because he loves doing. Oh yeah, yeah. I sent him when I first. Uh, okay, Daddy's talking. Okay. All right. <laughs> it's all good. It's it's Friday night, so it's. Uh, I know, I know. We're just hanging. I'm I'm gonna put him in the description below, and he'll be he'll be YouTube <laughs> famous. I promise you. Um. Yeah. Right. So where was I? Um. Yeah. When I I, I grade cards too. You you familiar with like PSA grading and stuff like that? I know a little bit about that, but you know, honestly, I I used to dabble a lot in sports cards, but I don't do. Um, I actually played Pokemon a lot when I was younger, but uh, I don't anymore. So um. So yeah, you know, people do the Pokemon cards, people do comic books and sports cards, and that's a whole, people make livings just going around the country making deals for comic books, buying them for a thousand, grading it and selling it for 5,000. Like that's not uncommon. Like the card I sold for 2,000, I bought for 1,000, spent $10 to grade it and then sold it for 2,000. And if I had a lot of money, you know, I could just do that. I do I honestly do it for fun. Mm -hmm. The first one I, I came across at a garage sale, I came across a big box of cards. Never was really interested in them. And then I, f I was looking through them and, uh, you know, there's a couple hundred dollar cards in there. I was like, wow, you know, and then I got another collection and there was another couple hundred dollar cards. So it really piqued my interest. And then I just started buying more and more collections and learning more and more about it. So this is just one of the niches that I do, but I'm really, I'm, what I'm doing now is trying to automate it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have this high powered scanner that mm -hmm. shoot, scans front and back and then I'm get um, uh, uh, I'm gonna have them uh, automatically did you have you ever experimented with the uh, Excel sheet to, to upload to eBay? Um, I, I have I dabbled a little bit but uh, yeah. I, the thing with I me is like I'm like still not full time so I'm, I'm right. part I'm part time I got it's um it's because you got a lot too oh my gosh it's um like uh, time management's key definitely time management what's uh i'm curious though how did you get started ebay like i mean i, I mean like what was your what was your like i mean how did you get start like selling stuff i mean did you just i mean did you have you done this for a while or you just decided one day you're going to sell on ebay or how do you learn about ebay first i'm curious um well uh, I'm 33 now, and so when I was 19, I used to buy stuff on Yahoo auctions and sell them on eBay. <laughs> oh my so yeah, that that was that was before they did. Uh, like, I mean, how long ago did they start PayPal? I'm curious. That was a while ago. So I I didn't even know. Yeah, I think there was PayPal back then too, but I don't know. But I don't remember. I just remember a couple of things I was selling and. I would sell like I found a cool link to like a rarity guide for Nintendo games. And I'm like, wow. I f and back then, like Google was just getting started or wasn't even there. And it was just it was like kind of like hard to find certain information. So I found this link and I was like, wow, this is awesome. I spent all this time making it. Let me let me uh, sell this link. So I would literally sell like rarity guide for NES. People <laughs> would buy it and I just send them a link to someone else's website. And I was selling like 10 of these a week. And so I, you know, it was, I did that for just a few months, like just for fun. And I never really took it seriously, mm -hmm. but, um, or I, I did, but I was so young and immature, you know, a new video game came out and I, that was it. I was done mm -hmm. for a couple months. Mm -hmm. So um, it took me a while to grow up. And, and now uh, I've been doing this now for like three years and it started with, uh, watching those shows on on tv the american pickers and you know those guys and storage storage wars and things like that and you know i always had it in me you know my my both my parents are entrepreneurs and so i always needed to do my own thing and i did i was a web designer before this but um and i had you know one or two employees and you know i did a lot of contract work made great money but uh I wasn't really working for myself. I was working for at, and I was at the beck and call of all the people I made the websites for, mm -hmm. and it started to get extremely stressful and annoying. And you know, calls at twelve o'clock at night, my website's down. I didn't like that at all. It was just getting too much. Yep. So, uh, so this was my way out, and I was happy from going making like a lot per hour to you know making forty dollars a day. I was like, I felt free, you know. And that's how I started. And then I went from $40 a day to $100 a day to $200 a day. And then from there, you know, I started looking to hire someone. And by the end of the first year, we were doing pretty good. I think my first year we did like 100000 in sales. But, I, you know, and I was maybe working half the year full time. And that's, you know, for 
just starting, you know, that's decent, I guess, you know, but um that's when you do the full yeah, no, it's it's okay. Yeah. I mean now I look, I'm like, you know, the, I think the first year, if you have the the desire to to really just jump in and just you know, if you like here's the thing, any job you're in, if you are spending time outside of work to get better at that job then you'll be successful at that, you know, no matter what it is, because you're, you're, you're invested into it and you're investing in education towards it. Mm -hmm. And so eBay is the same way. If you're, you know, just treating eBay like two, three hours a day and that's it. And uh, in a, um, uh, what is the word, you know, it, instead of somebody who's working two, three hours a day, but also on their way to their other job or work, listening to podcasts, reading books, watching all the, you know, Tank and the Bane, all the things and continually educating yourself. Um, I think there's a huge difference. Yeah. That, that I, I never get, that sound never gets old. I know. I know. <laughs> so was your, uh, was your wife pretty supportive when you went full time three years ago? She was doing it with me. Oh, she was it with me. Uh, she was on, she's a nurse. And we, uh, when we started, I know exactly how long I did it. Cause, uh, Evan was uh, like a month old when we started. So I just see, okay, how long have I been reselling? Well, how old's our son? And so that's that's how I figured it out. But we started together and then, cause she was on like uh, maternal leave and then she, it was extended. She probably didn't go back to work for like a year. And that first year we were kind of doing it together. Then she went back to work and she started getting sick of all the stuff in the house. And then she, you know, and then, you know, this and that. And so I had to get out of the house and so, moved to the warehouse, but, uh, or moved to the, I got kicked out to the garage and then I got kicked out, uh, cause stuff, stuff would overflow. How do you do that with the overflowing and stuff in the house? Oh my gosh. You have no idea. I have such an amazing, amazing. I mean, Ashley is so amazing that, you know, most, most, most wives are not put up with it, but I've, um, so the way that I am structured is like, so I'll bring everything in the house. Like I, we have like a dining room area and we don't really use it yet. Um, and so I'll, I'll photo photograph everything on my mannequins. I've got a um, turntable. It's different than a lazy Susan because it's the motor or the electric ones, the big ones, you know, that can handle a, a lot of weight. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll take all the photos there. And then I'll, I'll um, actually list it and put it in the bins behind me in the garage. So I just kind of start in the house and then move it this way. That way it's not like all in one, one at a time or uh, do you do batches. No, I, I do like, uh, I'll do like a hundred to 150 listings. Um, you know, like for example, I'll take 150 photos and then uh, we'll list 150 items and I'll bin it, uh, you know, through the did bins here. Straight to the mannequin or did you start with flat lay first or? Oh, no, I, I do. Um, for me, I do mannequin. Um, you know, I do a little bit of flat laying, but mostly mannequin. And then I do have a, um, a cool, um, it's the Amazon, you know, big, uh, lighting box basically. Yeah, I, got, I got one of those. Yeah. They're nice. Huh? The only thing I like, don't like about that is you have to put hard plastic. I have hard plastic in the, you know, the bottom cause it gets dirty. You have to like wipe it off and it's kind of a pain, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to send a link to, uh, to farm girl scavenger. All three of us will be on here. She is amazing. Give me one second. I'm kind of curious though on the, how do you not go crazy with those Pokemon cards? Cause like I was looking in that box and holy cow there, that, that would I take just sort it all out just now. It took me like two hours. Really? I go wow. through, I have, I have like, you know, my piles. I already, I, it's just like second nature. It's relaxing to me. I just sit and sort, listen to music, watch YouTube and just, it's, you know, after a while, now I know exactly how to sell these and get the most out of it, you know? So like I, that I, box cost me like maybe 125 to to $150 total. And I'll probably make three to 400 out of it. And, you know, it's not that great, but I enjoy it. And it's something to do on the side. Yeah. And if, if it gets you to like the bottom line, you know, why you're, you know, you enjoy doing it. So it's not necessarily work at that point. And it's, you know, it's still getting something done for your business. That's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, I, I was wondering too, how you, cause I'm assuming your scanner only scans one each or does it do multiple? Right. So yeah. I, what I'm doing now is separating cards into piles. One pile is a dollar 99, two 99, three 99. Then there's cards that I auction off at nine, starting at 99 cents. Then I do like lots of 400 cards. Then I do a big box of damaged cards. Then I sell the energy separately. Then I sell the first. It's like so many different things, but 
uh, it's you know, and and um, uh, yeah, it's just it's it's a huge learning curve, but uh, but I enjoy it, you know, and like I'm getting into vinyl records now too. Uh, I actually have a, you ever heard of Discogs? Um, no, I haven't. Yeah, it's like a, a you guys hear me? Like a Poshmark, but for for vinyl records. We can. We can't see you though. Oh, well, hang on. I'm at the Asian market. I probably don't have my camera on. <laughs> the Asian, the Asian market, huh? Frank, we we had to have some humor on this Friday. Up, oh, you're breaking up. She's at the Asian market. At least, at least, put your uh, video on so we can see what's going on over there. And do some retail arbitrage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I, dude, I. Oh man, I. Um, so today I got a little tilted. I went to, uh, I went to Big Lots right, and I saw this protein. Um, gosh, what was the name? And I can't remember. Uh, crap. There's like probably forty of them there, and they're eight bucks each. I scanned it with my Amazon scanner. And they're scanning for like twenty seven dollars, you know, and that was after fees. And um, so I, I got all excited, and then all of a sudden I see, oh, I'm not approved to sell it. And um, so I went rushed home because I didn't have my laptop. Tried to get approved, and uh, nope. Um, so I mean, it's just it happens. It happens with Amazon, but it's. Can it's, you see me now? Uh, no, I do not see you. You know, I do not you can... know what the heck I. I don't know. Go ahead, Frank. Yeah, if you're, uh, uh, I'm a lot of times in the, uh, you know, at Target, whatever, scanning stuff, and if I'm not approved, I'll log in right there on my smartphone and just try and add it through the browser, and it, and a lot of times I'll just get approved. I should have, but see, Big Lots is like two blocks away from me, so I figured, you know, okay. um, but it's, um, yeah, it's, I, I have, I'm. You know, I do about anywhere from eight to nine thousand a month on eBay. Uh, fourth quarter, I did more than that per month. But um, Amazon, I'm doing like two to three thousand. But mind you, it's you know I have a full time salary position job, so that's 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 really good. It's tough, yeah, it's tough. But yeah, I'm actually thinking about going full time in in three months, and uh, I'll ramp it in gear, and then definitely my my game plan would be right around you know fifteen to twenty thousand. I think I can easily. Uh -huh. do What's going on? What's going this, on, scavenger girl? This is scary. I really needed to talk to you, Source, because I got to tell you something. <laughs> um, so I was watching one of your videos the other day, and I was like, holy crap. Uh -oh. Oh, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. You got a fan on here. You got a fan on here, Source. I know. I see that. That's all. Awesome. <laughs> uh, is this better? Is this okay? I, I I don't know actually. Maybe maybe I, it's the video. Mm -hmm. I think it's the video. It's killing you. I can see myself. Dude. All right. Well, we'll see how this goes, and if it doesn't work well, then but if, if as long as you can hear me, that's what matters. <laughs> so. I showed him one of your videos, Source, uh, five days ago, okay. and he went and got all of his boxes. He's 32. He's got his own store. He went and got all of his boxes, and he stayed up for like 24 hours, and he sorted through all his boxes, and he has been selling his magic cards like freaking crazy. Thank you very much. No problem. Yeah, it works. Oh, yep. I, I used to hit up the magic quite quite often, actually. It was fun. Back in the day, I think I still have my deck, my blue deck. Oh, dude, that's awesome, dude! Yeah, I never played, but I always was interested. Yeah, it's uh, I I the cool thing about cards too is the fact that you can buy so many of them, and it doesn't take much room for you to, to store. Absolutely. I'm curious, how, how how do you store them? Are you just doing them in you know? I, I do the uh, uh, five thousand card boxes with dividers, and each you know. Um, like let's say a box is A, and then each row is one, two, three, four, five, and then inside of the rows are the dividers. So if I sell a card, it's an A one five, right? So uh, you know, it'll be very, it'll be very quick to get to. What's the average you're selling? Like how many of these cards are you selling per day? I haven't listed in in a couple weeks, and I'm still selling about ten to fifteen a day. But when I'm listing actively, forty to fifty a day, easy. Holy cow! So you're shipping what a ton of those cards. 
What kind of scanner are you using? That's what I want to know. Well, I, I didn't get the scanner until recently, so I've been selling for about two years without it. Um, but uh, I have an Epson workforce. It's kind of expensive, but I finally... You should, you should do a video on that. Yeah, I plan on making like a whole course because I was even looking and um, I use Terrapeak a lot. And Terrapeak, I, I, I took just for Magic cards, Pokemon cards, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I typed that in and that... There are about four million each in sales on at, on eBay, wow. so a total of twelve million. And Nike is like ninety million, I believe, or something like that, or seventy million. Wow! So, you know, you look how many people are making, you know, selling like crazy, you know, and and all the stuff Nike sells. And if you add up all the cards, and then maybe a couple other smaller games and some baseball cards and stuff, I mean, it's pretty even as far as market share and how much. You know, and then the other thing is with the cards, I, you know, you can use an international stamp and ship anywhere in the world for a dollar fifty, right? So right. I actually make more money by shipping a card to like Australia than I do to to, to New York because the, I actually charge an extra dollar fifty, and the stamp only costs a dollar fifteen. Exactly. Huh. That's interesting. I um, I might have to get in that card game then. <laughs> Give it's, me a know, scanner. It's, fun. it's a lot of work, and honestly. You know, once in a while, I'll buy a lot for 20 bucks and there'll be a hundred dollar card in it and it'll be exciting. But, you know, it, it took me about a year and a half to uh, really get a good grasp on it. You know, and the, yeah, it just it's very time consuming. So you got to enjoy it. You know, if yeah. you enjoy it, like if you've played it, if it's nostalgic for you, it's like video games. People love selling video games because they love playing video games and they're yep. big nerds like me. I love that's how I started selling just uh, video games and stuff like that. That's really the main thing I was flipping. And then I moved into every other category. Like huh. I'm not very interested in clothing or vinyl records, but I've learned it because it's extremely profitable and I hate yeah. passing up stuff in the, in the stores every day. So I'm, I'm a vintage nerd and I sold last night. It was so funny. I went in this weekend and redid my, almost all the prices on my store and just redid a few things and I had this vintage you guys are gonna laugh it's a hair washing shampoo tray to use at home it's like 60 years old <laughs> it was all it was in the original packaging it was all muddy it had been in someone's shop so I listed it for $24.99 because there really wasn't anything out there and I literally listed that sucker and this morning I woke up at five o'clock with a an offer on it and I was like cha ching sold because it cost me nothing right I think I nice I, to somebody in New Jersey it, it's really I'm cool to, can you imagine like it isn't it such an amazing time right now like to live that is because you can literally sell stuff from your house like you don't have to go outside your house you know you can sell stuff in your house so it, it's an incredible time and I uh to be a reseller, I mean, it's. I think everybody should experience it. One, being a reseller. Two, being on social media because it really helps you. It. I've learned so much. I've I've gained more than I've I've definitely gave um, being on social media, and it's just it's just a really cool experience. And you guys, um, I know there's not a ton in the chat because we, you know, this spontaneous live on a Friday. But you guys need to check out Source's channel because he's got a YouTube okay. channel. And uh, it is awesome. He has got an amazing, amazing YouTube channel, and I think consistency is the key with YouTube. And you're pumping out videos like one every other one once uh, every other day, right? Or every day, or something like that. So. Every day, yeah. Binge watch. That's what I say. Listen while you're li while you're listening. Yes, and uh, it, uh, go ahead and put your channel in the chat too, so our uh, our 25 viewers can can go subscribe because you've got a great <laughs> great YouTube channel. Yeah, just, just type in source it up on uh, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure. I mean, just leave right now and go check it out because we're we're just doing a, uh, fly by night. You know, Friday night live on YouTube. But uh, and, and what's your Instagram handle? So everybody knows the same, right? Source it up for Instagram. All right. Sorry, I'm muted. I gotta... yeah, same thing. Same okay. Thing. Cool. You taking off, Scavenger Girl? I do because Justin has his shoot his movie shoot tomorrow at our house and I got to finish grocery shopping. Oh. To all. all right. Yeah, no. Well, but if, are, are you still thinking of him? Doing what? Sorry. Let me know. 
Are you still doing something tomorrow? Yeah, I do have a really, really cool interview tomorrow. So I'll, I'll let you know, too, on the, the other thing. I'm pretty positive we are. So. All right. To me, yep. source, I appreciate your videos. Love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Have a great rest of your evening. All right. Enjoy the, uh, enjoy the Asian market. <laughs> Bye. I will. Source, so we're uh, real quick, and then I'll let you go because I want to be respectful of your time. I know you have a ton of cards, but... Where are you sourcing at? Because you've got two employees, right? One that's an actual employee, one that I thought was, um, oh, three employees, sorry. Um, and are, so are you primarily well, sourcing or? Well, okay. So I, I am sourcing. I had, um, and I do have one guy sourcing a lot. Like for instance, tomorrow uh, we're going to a book sale, me and, and another guy, we're just going to, I mean, they, the last time I went, they're selling like audio books for like 10 cents and stuff. And I'm like, can I have them all? You know, and they're like, sure. You know, last time, so I filled up my car with audiobooks for ten cents at each, and it was it was just it was crazy. So we're gonna go again, but I do. You know, book sales are great, but, but we do just the regular. You know, thrift sales, uh, thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales. You know, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage. Uh, How do you hang? Auctions, yes. you <laughs> I've done some wholesale. You know, I've tried. I've kind of dabbled in a lot. What what's going on? Are you trying to disconnect? It won't let me disconnect. Oh man. Okay, one you second here. Me. <laughs> <laughs> like peace. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. That was, that was quick. Abrupt. Uh she's yeah, she the jack button really works on this thing. No, she is uh she's amazing. We had we had her on my channel recently and and she had better audio, but she was, uh, she's just a fun person to hang out with. But I, um, it's, it's interesting to me, like my goal with my YouTube channel to start with is to invite people that aren't really famous on YouTube and Instagram, because I think a lot of times as creators, like, and I don't get me wrong. I love being on and, and inviting creators that have a ton of subscribers and are really well known. But my goal to start with is to invite a bunch of people that, aren't really big, aren't really famous to you, to my YouTube channel and kind of, you know, uh, shine some light on some pretty amazing people that sell on our same platform because I've already had three, um, interviews with some really cool people. Um, you know, hustling Hill was on and he's in college and, and he's got like a, a warehouse, you know, about the size of mine as you know, size of my garage here. So it's incredible. And, uh, and it's really cool to get some of these people on here because it's they're, they're, they they have never been live before, so um, it's you know it's a different experience for them. You get like a raw, uncut version of them. You know where if I went live somewhere, or you went live somewhere, it's a little bit different because we know you know we've been live before. We know kind of the structure of it, so it's really cool. So Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, I'm doing that. I'm inviting just random people that sell on eBay, no matter if they have one follower or a hundred followers. So it's yeah. just a I really like that, man. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, and I was on, uh, I mean, Chris, you know, Chris is the one that got me to do social media. Um, he called me on the phone one day. It was weird. So I was part of his Patreon, right? And I was, um, I just had a simple question. And then he was like, hey, uh, can I call you in 45 minutes? And, uh, and I was at work and then he called me and we talked for an hour. It was just like random, you know, uh, really spontaneous. He gave me a call and then we were talking for a while. And uh, then I was like, you know what, maybe I should start a YouTube channel and do social media. And uh, it's just funny how one little instance like that can change the way you do things. You know, had I not got that phone call, me and you wouldn't be talking like I wouldn't have this channel. So it's really, it's really cool. And I'm super excited for you because you've started your channel and it's already, I mean, you have the structure, right? You have, you know, you have your business, you have like your warehouse, you know, and you have your family and you have everything, you, you already have everything. And so all you needed to do was just hit the play button and start filming. And, uh, yeah, man. So, so, um, what I like to do though, is try and get stuff like while I'm doing it. Right. So I'm trying to do the sourcing. Like when I source, I just want to show you guys what I got, you know, and I, I want to, I used to take a GoPro and like button up my shirt and leave one button undone and have a little GoPro sticking out. Yeah. <laughs> and I did it a couple of times to have footage from like a year ago. I'm going to start doing that again. And you can actually go live from your GoPro through your phone, right? So you can do YouTube live like that. And that's pretty cool. 
So, you know, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. And so I want to sort of integrate YouTube in instead mm -hmm. of having to spend extra time because I don't have a, a lot of time. Right. And uh, I did one video. It had all the numbers pop up and everything. Yeah. And uh, it was just it took me like two extra hours. I'm like, I can't do this every day. Yeah. And I think people appreciate your way you're going to do it. Like they they want the like they want that footage like raw, you know, so they can go out there. I feel like a lot of viewers, you know, see things structured and, you know, and it's haul videos, stuff like that. That's really popular. But I think that GoPro idea would be amazing. I would almost pay 10 bucks just to see it pop out of your shirt while you're walking around, you know, <laughs> She gets, but Sorry, uh, the last two seconds he was. Uh, oh, do you do you not, fell off the couch and he couldn't? You know, he, he was <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it weird how? I mean, you know how like fatherhood has changed your life. Do you drive a little uh, drive a little slower now to places, or are you still? Uh, nope. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I'm I'm more careful, you know, with everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's and, and just wait until he gets like you know a little bit older. He's going to be going sourcing with you, and you're going to be an amazing dad because you can sit there and kind of teach him the value of like money and like flipping stuff and making money. And you know, I think like when because I'm going to be 32, right? So I'm right around your age. And correct me if I'm wrong, but when we were younger, like being an entrepreneur, like owning your own business, it didn't seem as cool. Like people didn't push that. It was more like get a job, get it like a job, right? So. Um, I think nowadays it's it's a it's for kids nowadays. It seems like cool to be an entrepreneur, and I think a lot of that has to do with like Shark Tank and you know shows like that. But it never used to be cool like that when we were kids. At least it wasn't for me, you know. No, for sure, man. You know, and uh, did did you come from a family of entrepreneurs, or were you? Where uh, did this desire come from you? I think like half half. Like mo yeah, most of my family actually were entrepreneurs. Like so, I. I grew up um, with my grandparents when I was real young and they have a big cattle farm, a massive one outside of Salem, Oregon. And then um, my aunt and uncle had a big car lots that they owned in California, Yorba Linda. And, um, you know, my dad actually, he did, um, he took those big railroad ties in uh, Big Bear, California. And, and he was a landscaper, but he was more like an artist. He would build those things and cut them into like building blocks and, uh, you know, up to driveways to really expensive houses. And uh, so, yeah, I think now that you asked that, I, it's funny, I've never been asked that before, but I think, yeah, most of my family was entrepreneurs, you know, or own some sort of business. It's just funny. What about you? Same. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my dad ran multiple businesses. My mom has, uh, she has an online business doing private label now. And, you know, 10 years ago, she didn't know how to turn a computer on at all. And like, you know, I was no help. I was, you know, doing my thing. And, uh, mm -hmm. It was uh, now, now I'm, ha I'm, you know, I have the ability to help her in ways because I have much more technical background and she's really good with like art and stuff. And so we, we mix pretty well. So that is amazing. Your, your mom is doing that private label. Wow. Yeah, on, on Amazon. Yeah. She wow. Was pretty, it was pretty good. You need to have her on the show, your show one of these times. Yeah. Yeah. I plan on doing that. You know, I know a couple really cool uh, you know, online related entrepreneurs, uh, in my local area and, you know, friends of friends and stuff. So I'm going to, I'll eventually get around to that. You know, it's, it's funny. Like it's so easy to connect with people nowadays. Like it's, you know, it's not obviously like it was 15, 20 years ago when we were younger, but now it's so easy to, you know, I, I honestly, I can tell you that I have more friends. I know it sounds weird, but I have more connected friends online that I've never met than I do in real life. And uh, so it's just a really awesome time because I can connect, connect with somebody in New York or, you know, Texas and um, kind of hear their story. And I think that's what, you know, Chris does a lot of times. He does these, does these interviews with these amazing resellers all around the U.S. And, and so it's just really cool to be a part of this big, massive community all with one goal, and that's to sell and flip stuff. You know what I mean? For sure. For sure. So, well guys i want to uh i'm gonna this was really spontaneous i would love to have this amazing guy on my channel with an actual an actual like scheduled show but, uh, that would be really cool and i would actually have like real questions to ask you but uh i think it's awesome that you're like a family guy too i think that's really cool and you're kind of going through the same thing i'm going we're right around the same age and have two one kid one on the way and we're reselling i'm going full-time you're full-time so it's really really cool to connect with you and uh we'll do we'll do a live show together and uh, i'm gonna make this live i'll put your um youtube link in the description so people can can get you too so you guys subscribe he's got some amazing stuff going i mean anybody that's gonna wear a gopro on their shirt 
like Rally Roots or some of those other guys is pretty fantastic in my book. So if anyone knows a really cool way to hide it other than because in the summer I can't be wearing flannels, you know, walking around and be sweating. <laughs> I don't, I'm like, I can do that in the winter. I don't know how to do it in the summer. So I got to figure it out. Any Dude, tips? Are welcome. <laughs> we're going to get you a fanny pack. Oh my gosh. You have a fanny. That would actually work. You can do that year round. You get a little fanny pack, put a hole in it, you know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> or uh, this wouldn't work actually. I was going to say your little guy can walk around with a camera because nobody's going to say no to him, right? But um, th- yeah, maybe a little wobbly. So that probably wouldn't work. <laughs> All, right, <laughs> All right, man. Well, it was fantastic. You have a good night. Good luck. Uh, good luck in those cards on too. That's uh, that's Thanks, a massive. Thanks, so, all right, guys. Have see ya. Long.